My name is Richard Sear. I work for Frost & Sullivan and I am a senior partner and chief solution officer here. When you move from Southern England to Texas, where I've now been for 20 years, suddenly that becomes an Australian accent. I've been called Australian now probably every day for the last 20 years by somebody. I think the most interesting part is probably the trends work that we do. I absolutely love digging into social dynamics and what makes humans love, learn and tick. Well, automotive probably makes up about 40% of the work that we do. You probably could not name an automotive manufacturer that we have not worked with. <laughs> so I have a nine and an eight year old and their experience of mobility is going to be drastically different to my 17 year old who already owns a car and drives around in a traditional car. By the time my kids come to age, that car will be fully autonomous without question within most regions, um, certainly states. Uh, within the US. And predominantly the vehicle sold by that point uh, will most likely at least be cheaper uh, in electric format than they are in traditional uh, petrochemicals. So very, very different for them. Much safer. They will be significantly safer and I, and I will feel more comfortable with them driving than I do my son, although he's a very good driver. I think the two most common misperceptions are the gasoline uh, is a dead product within the mobility space so everything therefore needs to shift to electric and the second one would be that millennials and gen z have driven society to not want to own things i think absolutely we will see mobility um, go vertical so i don't like the term flying cars but going vertical absolutely 100 percent in terms of rapid transportation mechanisms uh, i'm not convinced with hyperloop i'm uh, much more of a fan of uh, super high speed trains. Uh, and I do think we'll see very high speed trains that will exceed, you know, well over 200 miles per hour. Testing affects it dramatically. Uh, most likely we're looking at solutions that will move people faster. So what does that do? That increases noise and that increases vibration. So test plays a very crucial role. None of these innovations in the future will happen um, without strong advancements in testing formats, especially around from, in my opinion at least, uh, noise and vibration testing. To get into the kind of work that I'm doing, I think the number one thing that you have to be is curious. And by curiosity, I mean that you have an open mind to absolutely everything. And you have to be willing to have your mind changed um, because of the things that you're seeing and feeling. Diversity is everything about what we do. I, I mean, I, I could not be any clearer about it, whether that be gender-based, racial-based, all of that must be integrated into what you do, or you cannot hope to have an innovative outcome. By its nature, humans uh, want the same kind of outcomes. We want happiness, we want love, we want peace, um, we want companionship, we want collaboration. And so it's incredibly insightful to see that over the thousands and thousands, tens of thousands of years that humans have been around, really, we haven't actually changed all that much at our core. And so the hope that I have is that that core is not going to change because of uh, politics um, or viruses or, or, or what have you. I still believe that 99.9% .9 of the world want the same thing.